All right, guys, bearded appliance repair. This is us. We're going to help you fix it. We got ourselves a side by side GE refrigerator today. It's a little older, it's probably close to 10, 12 years old. But what we got going on, no cool situation. And our compressor is now powering up. So this video specifically is about the inverter on, you know, these GE refrigerators. Um, if that condenser fan is running, your compressor should be running. So what we're doing in this video is we're going to show you guys how to diagnose um, whether or not you need a control board, a inverter, and or compressor. And to start off with, it's really hard to tell if you need a compressor, if it's like locked up on the inside, if it tests good electrically. The only thing you can do is get a new inverter, put it on, see if the compressor cuts on. But to make sure that you don't need a control board is you got to make sure this guy is getting um, 120 volts at this connection right here, which we have 119.7. That is perfect. And you also need um, anywhere between 5 DC to, well, I don't even know what it goes up to, but I've seen 5, I've seen 7, I've seen 9. Um, it's a variable speed compressor, so um, depending on what this DC voltage is, tells the inverter to power the compressor at a certain speed. So, um, if you got anything around 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, um, you know that your board's good. You need 120, and you need a reference voltage of 5 let's say 5 to 15 <laughs> I'm not sure but if you got 0 um, we know we're not getting that voltage from the board and likely you'll need the board and if you guys noticed I have that control board cover off and I also changed out this control board I don't have a video of it but um, whenever I first came it wasn't it was getting the 120 down to the inverter but it wasn't getting um, the voltage to actually tell the inverter to turn the compressor on because it's initially or kind of like a relay a little bit um, that 120 is what actually powers the compressor and then the other voltage tells it how fast to go and stuff so it needs both if you don't have one or the other um, you're looking at a control board but if you have both likely it's going to be your inverter as long as the compressor ohms out and I will show you how to do that um, I'm going to get into getting this inverter off and we'll put the new one on but I just want to make make sure you guys know that um, in this video here I did it the same day because I put in that new control board thinking oh that's all it needed because um, again it had that 120 but it didn't have that 5 to 10 or whatever voltage to actually turn the compressor on um, we didn't have that reference there so I was like okay we need a control board I got that sucker ordered came back and put the new board on and noticed that this compressor still wasn't powering on so did the checks again got the 120 again and then we have that reference voltage there so I know that the board is now good and now I need to put in an inverter as long as the compressor ohms out and again I've already been here I've done these checks already um, I put it back together and everything before I left just so I can do a YouTube video for you guys but uh, you saw me take out that one Phillips head screw that actually hold the inverter in place um, once you do that I mean that cover pretty much comes off and then you can take off this connection here once you get that connection off um, then you do an ohm check and on these types of compressors where they have inverters from all three pins like let's say there's three so you go from one to two and if that's six ohms two to three 
should be six ohms and then three to one should be six ohms so all all pins should be ohming out around the same number if they're not likely your compressor um, is bad electrically and again like I said at the beginning of the video you won't know if the compressor is bad mechanically until it actually starts powering on so putting on an inverter on a bad compressor it's kind of a risk because these these inverters they're not cheap um, I want to say this inverter here is probably $120 maybe something like that um, I don't know I'll try and get it linked in the description down below for you guys um, but yeah these inverters are not cheap control boards they're it's probably the same price as a control board if I remember right but here's the check where we're gonna ohm out the compressor uh, to see if pins 1 to 2 are good pins 2 to 3 are good and then to 3 and 1 and I did get I want to say well we'll see here in a second I think it's 6 or 7 ohms if I remember right I will show you guys once I get situated all right, guys, testing all three real quick. All right, 6.4, and then 6.45, 6.5, and then 6.5. So we know that all those pins are around the same ohms. So this compressor tests good electrically. Um, so we're going to put on a new inverter, and we're going to hope for the best. Um, and again, guys, it is a risk because you don't know cause you you just can't know if a compressor is good mechanically until you put one of these things on although I will say that whenever I find a bad inverter um, and the compressor tests good electrically I cannot say I've ran into a bad compressor uh, so likely this inverter is your issue um, I do just want to warn you guys up front. There's a chance you'll need a compressor for this thing. And putting in compressors on these refrigerators, they are not cheap. Um, I typically charge upwards of $1,000 to put one of these things on. That's the only thing I do that day. Um, and I make sure everything is good to go. Uh, I know a lot of companies, they can get it done in two to three hours. Not me. I spend the whole day doing these things because, to be honest, sealed system work is my weakness. So I got to make sure it's done right. And there's been a lot of times where I would solder something in, and before you know it, I'm called back a couple days later to find a small little leak. So I make sure that these things are good to go. That's why I charge so much. <clears throat> but, anyways. Likely the inverter is going to be your issue, but there's always a chance that that compressor is bad mechanically. And you just don't know till you put a new inverter on. So we're going to plug this sucker up. Got the reference voltage there. And the 120. We're going to get the grounds on. And we're going to see if things this thing powers up. All right, folks, this inverter is in. <clears throat> so then we just plug her in and see what she does. And again, once that condenser fan comes on, this compressor should power up. And there she is. You can hear it. She's rumbling. She sounds good. And um, once you hear this, you know, okay, it was definitely that inverter. There's always... You know, something, especially when electronics are being replaced, that there could be something else wrong that we don't know about. Like when you're talking about your sealed system, you could have leak, restriction. Um, yeah. So, you never know. Um, to give you an idea of if your fridge is cooling or not, give it I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Um, stick your hand in the fresh food section 
where that where the air's coming across from the freezer side, especially on a side by side like this, to see if you're getting cool air. If you're getting cool air, likely it's good to go. And that's that old board that I replaced. And there's the inverter. We needed a control board and an inverter to fix this refrigerator, but that's it on this one. So I mean if this helps, give me a like, subscribe, and I do appreciate y'all watching.